Is that a new Stormtrooper on the Kenobi show? Hold my beer. That actually says William Shakespeare. Unbelievable. Freaking narcissist. I'm a YouTuber. It goes with the territory. For this build, you'll need a Stormtrooper helmet and black paint. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Kidding. Kidding. If only it were that easy. The Kenobi Trooper has a lot of similarities to the classic Stormtrooper, which I have built before. However, the brim and a few other things are radically different. So... For this build, I used EVA foam, EVA foam dowels, craft foam, half cylinder foam, coffee foam, I like foam in my coffee, hot glue, super glue, contact cement, fast dry sealant, tinted plastic of some kind, red LEDs, a sharpening stone, paint, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I traced a helmet dome template onto a sheet of EVA foam floor mat. I made this dome template years ago and have been refining it ever since. There's a link to it in the video description down below, as well as a complete trooper template, which I developed over the course of this build. I flipped the shapes to get the reverse side. Sometimes I'll connect the two halves in the middle or in the front just to help hide the seam where it's gonna be most visible, but sometimes that can make gluing a little bit more difficult, so I put some separation between the two. As I trace, I'm making sure to get all the registration marks so I can line up the pieces later. And I'm labeling them front, back, left, and right, just to prevent further confusion. Next, I cut out the pieces with the box cutter. Make sure to cut with the blade angled straight up and down, otherwise you'll get a ridge in your armor, which can be useful if you're making medieval armor or, or something highly stylized, but sci-fi, not so much. The EVA foam will dull out your blade, so you'll have to continually sharpen it with a knife sharpener. I switched to scissors for some of the simpler cuts, and then finished them off with a work knife. I also made side pieces, and then sanded it smooth on the belt sander. Then I heat formed them with a heat gun, not a hairdryer heat gun. Your hair dryer can't do this. In fact, it'll burn the foam if you hold it over the same spot long enough, which is why I do most of the heating up on the pattern side, which is going to end up on the inside when the helmet's done. Then I manipulated the foam manually until it was curved slightly, and then so that it would retain its curve, I set it inside a bowl while it cooled. Fun fact, I only do this when Vader's taking his back to spa days. Once all the pieces were heat formed, I glued them together with contact cement. The fumes from this stuff aren't great to breathe, so I'm doing this in an open garage. You can't just apply the glue to the foam and then immediately stick it together. There's a 12 to 14 minute wait time. Contact cement is a bit temperamental and it's something that has to be done in stages. But for the longevity of a prop that's probably going to bend over time, you know, suffer some kind of stress, it's really the best glue. When the glue had become tacky, I attached the pieces. Then I applied the glue to the center seam and when the glue had dried, I attached the two halves to form a dome. Then I let it sit overnight to air out. And in the meantime, I worked on the outer faceplate. I'm going going to cut out the remaining pieces using my original Stormtrooper templates. As you can see, you can almost get away with using just one sheet, but the dome means you'll need two. Oh no, if only EVA foam came in packs of four or more. I weighted those down and traced them with a white paint marker, but for this particular helmet, a Sharpie will also work because the final paint job is going to be black anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. For the face details, I flipped them so that it would come out symmetrical. When all the pieces were traced, I cut them all out with scissors, razor pens, or box cutters generally make for cleaner more precise cuts but scissors are just easier for me to show you guys on camera all it means is that i'm gonna have to do slightly more sanding but i'm not anakin skywalker so i can handle sand shots fire and then deflect it i use my rotary tool to sand the internal concave edges and use my belt sander to refine the larger exterior convex edges next i heat form the pieces using my heat gun heat forming small pieces can be difficult you often end up burning your fingertips, so I like to stick them on skewers for safety, like a very inedible marshmallow. When it was sufficiently heated up, I pressed it over the planishing iron, or anvil, to help shape the foam into a curved piece, and then rolled it up and stuck it into a cylinder transparent for your benefit. This is just the right shape that I can dish it in that same transparent dome that I like to use. When it cooled, I glued the edges together. They have darts in one end, forming this crazy cockatiel shape to help with the curve, making them even more spherical. That's opposite from what I did with my clone trooper helmet build because it's harder to hide seams when they're in front. Try not to stretch the edges of the darts, otherwise they won't line up right when they're glued.
glued together. The cheekbone plate can be heat formed by crushing it into a W shape. This will help form the nose. You have to be really careful with thin pieces like this goggle frame because they can easily burn. You're not gonna need to heat form this for as long as the pieces with more surface area. Okay, so these are the major face pieces fully heat formed. I glued them together very sparingly, partially because the super glue is very visible if it runs across the surface, but mostly because the face plate has a lot of openings in it. So I only glued it at the bridge of the nose and the very tips of the cheekbone. I glued those pieces together with super glue, which is a lot less of a hassle to work with than contact cement because you don't have to pay as close attention to things like ventilation, but it's not quite as flexible, so I wouldn't use it on the main dome seams. Any cosmetic details though, you'll be fine. The vent baffles are gray, so I'm just gonna cut those up from a strip of gray floor mat foam. I made those into strips about an inch long and then glued them to the inside of the space between the bridge of the nose and upper lip. It's not pretty from the inside, but looks fine from the outside. Oh, all that hot glue? That's just reinforcement, by the way. I initially glued all these pieces with super glue, but I don't want it to crack, so the hot glue is just extra. Then I glued the side tubes on. I glued the longer edge underneath the mask and the shorter one on top. All these curved pieces glued together will cause the face to deform just a little bit. It'll try to go back to its original shape. So you may have to make internal rib pieces to hold it together. This is the only one that's totally necessary though, because it doubles as a mounting plate for the main speaker detail. I actually lost this piece since the last time I made a Stormtrooper helmet, so I had to reprint it for my digital template files. And I'm happy to say there are no discrepancies, so yeah, I can vouch for my own product. I stopped doing the rigid internal support structures because those would inevitably get crushed by baggage handlers, but without the supports, the helmets would deform on their own, and just expand back out. So the compromise is to leave the supports in there, but make them out of foam. Then I grab some circle offcuts from previous builds and use them for the interior of the nozzles, effectively acting as ribs. These will help them hold their shape as well as provide a surface on which to mount the nozzle vents later on. I made the cheekbone vents by cutting slits into the foam pieces and then heating them up so that they'd expand and be visible. I planished them and glued them in place. Lastly, I added the final cheekbone shims they're just little triangles. This doesn't actually attach to the helmet dome. It attaches to the brim, so I'm going to need to make that first. I started off with my original Stormtrooper helmet brim template, but the Kenobi Trooper brim is a little bit different. It's more flared out, like Hylos or shorter Vaders or the Knights of Ren, which I've also done. I think I've done all those. Yeah, nice. So I made a mishmash of several of my old Trooper templates until I got it right. I heat formed that and stuck it in a tube to cool. When it cooled, I glued it to the dome, which by now had aired out and was safe to work around. Then I glued the mask to the brim. There's clearly a little gap right there, which I accounted for with the templates. I just didn't want to glue it on until I had the mask secured to the helmet. It's a diagonal tube piece. I heat formed that, rolled it up, cooled it in a tube, and attached it just the same as all the other pieces. Then I worked on the brow because it needs a lot of refinement. Oh, yeah, gonna need a bit of internal support to keep it that way. Angry, surprised. I super glued a foam strip to the top. Then to get it to align correctly, I glued a piece of wood in there, connecting the center of the helmet dome, the forehead, if you will, to the center of the mask. Then I wrapped that in foam to create the bridge of the nose. This is just a mess on the inside, by the way, but that's the only way for the exterior to look good. Honestly, if you're going for one of those HUD internal point of view things, it's really easy to just black out the inside. It'll probably happen naturally. Then I built up the goggle interior with scrap foam, mostly puzzle piece strips, just so that it would look right from the outside and also to get the lenses to sit right once I attach them. Then I made the ear pieces. They're just scrap gray foam floor mats. They consist of squares and rectangles. I glued them to the side and then folded them underneath. For the black speaker detail, I wanted to do something different that involves less sanding. So I cut a large foam cylinder in half and then wrapped smaller half cylinders around it, stacking them one on top of the other. For the center one, I cut one of those strips into a quarter strip just so that it would nestle securely within the groove not resting on top of it. I trimmed the edges and then glued it in place. When it was all together, I puttied up all of the seams. After that dried, I painted it black, which you can do quick and dirty for a Halloween costume, low lit independent film, costume party. But if you have the time, you should paint this very slowly over the course of several days. I actually had a bit of time on this one. So the way I did it was to start out with flat black acrylic house paint and only do it one side at a time to avoid drips from forming and then drying into the paint job. When the whole thing was coated and dried, I was able to tell where there were any uneven areas of 
seams that were still showing through or putty that built up and needed to be sanded. And then once I'd taken care of those, I could continue from there. For the next layer, I did gloss black house paint. Now again, since this helmet has a lot of curved surfaces, you also run the risk of drips, especially with gloss paint, because you really gotta lay it on thick in order for it to come out shiny. So in addition to painting the helmet one side at a time, I had to do between three and five coats of gloss black paint in order for it to actually come out glossy. Alternatively, you could spray paint it with plastidip and then hit it with a gloss black. But that comes with a whole host of other issues and isn't necessarily faster. So I chose not to do that with this one. It's up to you. When it had dried, I could work on the details. I added intake filters inset into the tubes. They're made of pipe scraps and 3D print support mesh. I use scraps of welding visor left over from one of my many Mandalorian helmet builds. I forget which one. And lastly, for dramatic effect, I wired it up with red LEDs because the Kenobi Trooper has some red accents. And that's how to make the Kenobi Trooper or Jedi Hunter. Now I'm ready to hunt some Jedi. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see upcoming builds. Because let's be honest, the subscribe button doesn't do what it used to. And if you actually want to get notified about upcoming builds, then you got to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, they'll be lost to the infinite scroll of your inbox. Be sure to leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons, the name scrolling by, who make these videos possible. To actually build something takes a whole lot more time and money. These videos just wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So if you enjoy these builds, want to see more of them, and want your build request to carry a bit more weight, then think about heading on over to the Patreon page, where you can enjoy ad-free early uploads. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later. Probably get the question, can you see out of it? And yeah, I can see out of all my helmets. This one's actually one of the better ones. The worst one is uh, the Squid Game one over there. You would think the red guy, but no, no, he's okay.